You know what? I've been waiting for a long time to talk to somebody from the band Girl School, and we were able to make that happen, and we're happy to do that right now. So, ladies and gentlemen, please sit back and relax, grab some popcorn or Doritos, whatever you want to grab. <laughs> Just don't grab yourself, <laughs> unless you want to. Well, anyway, <laughs> let's rock. It's Jackie Chambers, and we want to say thanks ahead of time to Jackie for being cool enough to be on the show, right? Indeed. You know, some rock stars won't do stuff unless they do it through proper channels. But some of them, you can just call them up and say, hey, man, they'll say, sure, let's I love do how this. you said that in a British accent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, really, I won't name names. <laughs> Ryan from Mudvayne. <laughs> but some people have to go through proper <laughs> channels. Whatever. Shemever. Channels my butt. I got a channel for you. It's the English channel. And joining us on the other side Jump of that, in it. <laughs> on the other side of that channel is Jackie Chambers, who we're happy to speak with, and I'm not even close to British, but by God I am Scottish nearly. So I guess I'm very close to British. Yes indeed. You know my, my dad's mom was British. Yeah. So my grandmother. Yes. Here we go, guys. Jackie Chambers, Church of Rock. I gotta press a button. We are joined today by somebody I could not wait to speak with, and she is joining us from the United Kingdom. She's the guitar player for the longest running, well, I hate to say this because it sounds so damn sexist, but it's not meant to be, longest running all-female band in the world, and one of my favorite bands since the 80s. Uh, welcome Jackie Jax Chambers from Girl School to the Church of Rock. Yes, it's definitely the longest running band in the world, female, for 45 years this year. It's awesome, and you have been with the band since 1999. I bet you have some stories. <laughs> I'm still the new girl. It's kind of amazing, really, isn't it? But there you go. <laughs> yeah, the new girl after, what, 24 years? 24 years. Can't believe it's been that long. Everybody keeps reminding me. It's longer, really. I've known the girls a lot longer. But, yeah, weird. <laughs> I was going to ask you if you were happened to be friends with Kelly Johnson since she was the former guitarist. Were you friends with Kelly? Yeah, yeah, we lived together for seven years. <laughs> well, I did not know yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, um, uh, I met the girls in about 1995 um, when I put an advert in the paper, um, a music paper in England, and uh, Kim answered it because she wanted to do a side project. So, um. We met up, that, we got on really well on the phone, so that night we met up uh, in Camden, in London, so I lived literally a couple of stops from her, on the tube, so we met up and went to see her boyfriend's band play that night, and um, we, we uh, put a little side project together, just writing songs, and of course that night I went out with the guys, and there were Denise, and Kim, and Kelly, and Tracy, and the usual lot, and Chris Nazi, so I met everybody all in one go, and we just become really good friends, so... I used to go, uh, Chris and Archie lived two streets away from me, which is quite amazing. And Kelly and uh, Denise lived together at that point in the house. And they used to live about two miles from me. So I used to nip around in the car and just go spend time with them all the time. So, so, you, yeah, were a to... so you were a fan of a girl's school then too, right then? No, I didn't really know them that much. I'd seen them once, because obviously I was more like into punk rock. So, I mean, I like rock, obviously, but I, I've never really seen them. And that, funny enough, the year before, in 94, um, I was married at the time, and I went with my husband to see um, Saxon, because we knew Quinny. So, um, and girls still were supporting. So that's the first time I'd seen them, and I only caught the last sort of four songs, because we tried to Quinny. And, of course, in the year later, when, when Kelly, uh, sorry, when Kim rang me, that was just like, wow, what a big coincidence. My brother used to have all, a lot of the songs, so, yeah, I, I kind of knew who they were, of course. So you're, you were more of a rocker than a punk rocker? I like both. I mean, I, I, I was 13 when 1977, the, the punk era, really hit. So, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, that was my thing. I was 13, you know, I was influenced by all the angst and the, uh, you know, the energy of punk rock music. But I still, I was always mad. I was cool to find I loved the cult and bands like that, you know, the usual stuff. Well, you just mentioned Saxon, and I love Saxon, and Biff Byford makes an appearance on your upcoming new album, right? Does indeed, yeah. We did uh, Born to Raise Hell, the head cover, and we've got Biff singing, we've got Phil Campbell um, on the guitar, and Duff playing bass. Yeah. So yeah, I was going to say, 
So Duff McKagan playing bass. Did you guys get into the same room, or did you have to utilize technology to do the recording? Yes, uh, technology. Yeah, they were on tour. I mean, that's what took so long actually to get the album finished because we we're waiting for Duff to come off tour so we could do it. We, we were going to do. Um, uh, we were actually going to end up releasing that as a single because it was. Um, it just took us so long. Our schedules was like trying to find time with Phil to do something that they. It was kind of scheduled because we were on tour that they were on tour. So yeah, we have to do it technology. I mean, that's kind of the way things are going these days. We're using it. Awesome. Uh, how many shows do you does Girl School generally play? Are you guys pretty active, or how often yeah. are you playing out? Yeah, I mean, we have been for a well, while since I've joined. We've been really active. Um, this year, we've done a tour in uh, UK already. It's only shown about eight, eight, ten gigs or something like that in the UK. Um, we're going out tomorrow. I leave tomorrow morning for Ibiza. Which is doing hard rock hell in Ibiza tomorrow. A um, couple of days in the sun, which should be nice. <laughs> and then um, we are doing a South American tour this year. A few festivals as usual because it's 45th anniversary. We're going to South America in September, which should be fun. And we're trying to get back to America. So we're hoping to yes. make that work for us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we really yeah. hope to have you. I'd like to see you guys in Portland, Oregon, USA. Oh, you know, that's my favorite place to play. Really? <laughs> yeah, I mean, every time we've done America, it's like, uh, because I'm vegan, the, the places, there's so many great vegan places there, and vegetarian places, and, and me and Trace are in their element. <laughs> it's like, yay, so much choice, it's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing, um, Oregon does have a lot of very health conscious people, so it's a great place for uh, rock and roll and eating healthy. Yeah, it was, it was great, we were uh, Oh, we just toured there, um, what was it, 2016, maybe, I think it was. And uh, Crucified Barbara was supporting us. And um, out of the whole tour, I think there were 14 of us with three bands. And there were only a couple of people away at meat. So even the drivers and the tech were like, you know, vegan or vegetarian. So we were finding the best places. And of course, we got to Oregon. And that was just like, yeah, this is it. This is the best place. And they made like gluten-free pizzas and everything. It was just Really? <laughs> 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 because we're all, ve all vegetarians and vegans, like every time we saw one of these huge markets, we just like vegetables. Like, oh, let's go in here. We spent so much time in supermarkets. We needed a bigger van. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's awesome. Well, we hope to have you guys back to uh, Portland uh, sooner than later because the new album drops in July. And what I've heard from it, the single that you've dropped is amazing, like super amazing. I love it. Oh, cool. Thank you. That's right. Yeah, July the 28th, that's going to be out. So, yeah, it seems like ages away, but it'll come so quickly. Yeah, we were... The video, video came out a few days ago, and we're bringing another video out, another song, I think in June, end of June, so probably about 28th again, end of June. And then it'll be the whole album, yeah. So there's two or three singles to come out first. And then, yeah. Gosh, awesome, go. yeah. We were rocking out last night to the new song, and it was just over and over and over again. I just love all of it. It was just a great production, great guitar, great, just a great rock and roll tune, you know? Um, we got a bit of help on that one. We had uh, Joe Stump, you know Joe Stump from Alcatraz? Oh, yeah, yeah, I was going to say, I, that was in my notes. I was going to say we had some help yeah, from uh, yeah. the gentleman from Alcatraz. yeah. Well, he wrote the actual riff originally, and um, I went in and played it all, and then at the end of it, I did the solo and everything, and then at the end, just, well, I'll just have a couple of little little twiddly bits, as I call them, <laughs> twiddly bits here and there, so that he's on the, you know, he's actually on his own song, as it were, really, yeah. So it kind of worked out really well, because we've done some Alpha, stuff on Alcatraz, their album, we get some back and forth on there, so I'll we'll get one of Alcatraz on ours. And uh, a lot of the fans might not know, but back in 1980, uh, a, a fan club formed around girls' school called the Barmy Army Club. And on the new album, there's a song called Barmy Army that's, I'm guessing, a dedicated to those fans. Absolutely, definitely, yes. Yeah. I mean, they've stuck with us the whole time. And we, every time we play, well, mainly London, we hear this little chant in the audience, where the Barmy Girls School Army, da, 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 da. you can hear it every time we play it, it's brilliant. Just the part of <laughs> wow, what loyal fans, man. That's awesome. Uh, do you still reside in you still reside in Leeds Leeds, England? 
I say, yeah, yeah, none of us live in London anymore. We all lived there uh, a few years ago, and now we all moved out. I mean, Leeds, Kim and Denise are sort of down south, sort of Harwich, sort of way, and uh, Tracy is in Spain, in a different country. <laughs> wow. Mm. Um, it's going to be the lot of stuff we're rehearsing, so we haven't rehearsed anything new yet for this gig tomorrow, but we we'll probably will for our, um, South America in America. <laughs> when we get there, we'll have to do something new off the new album. <laughs> It'd be funny if you recorded a live album and did live in Leeds like the Who did. Ha! Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the most iconic album for them, that one, for sure. Um, what, about your, what about your other band, uh, Ceteria? Does that band still play? Ceteria, yeah. Funny enough, our album was due to be released July the 28th as well. <laughs> so um, I had to change that, obviously. I didn't want it to be the same day. Once I heard that um, Silver Line in the record company would bring it out 28th of July, I thought, right, we'd better change that for a couple of weeks after. So I'm a very busy girl right now because we've just done like a little pledge campaign, crowdfunders. So I'm, I'm busy putting all that together, signing things, um, new CDs, ready to go. It's a crazy time right now because. Every, when I get back from here, I'll be um, going to get everything signed, then I'll be putting all that out, then we've got gigs with Citeria. It just kind of works out. A gig here, a gig there, it's, and it's completely different kind of band. You know, it's, um, it, it's more like a pop rock band, a bit of harmonies in there. There's no point in doing two bands the same, is there? So it's like, it's just something different. Although, on this album, we've done one song that I wrote called It's a Mess, which we've done, I've done with both bands. So that's going to be interesting. It's a different take. <laughs> I like the title. It's a mess. <laughs> it's a mess. Yeah. It's a mess. The human race is a mess. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was going to ask you what you do when you're not with girls' school, but it sounds like you're a full-time rocker. Uh, there's nothing I'd like doing more. So, yeah. <laughs> I do that. I, mean, I actually got quite a peaceful life, really, other than, other than rock and roll. I like to meditate. So a bit of badminton. Yeah, I love cooking, I've got a garden, lots of things going on. Um, what, at what age did you become a musician? Um, I didn't really start too late, I was 17 really, when I put a band together, and I, I really wanted to be um, a songwriter rather than a guitar player. I just wanted to write songs, but obviously to write songs you need an instrument to write on, so I picked up a guitar and started learning. <laughs> That's awesome, is, that, is guitar your primary instrument? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can play a bit of bass and a bit of keyboards, but, you know, it's good to write on a, a guitar, I think. Um, I wanted to ask you, you, you guys played at Motorhead's 30th anniversary show. Was that one hell of a show or what? Yeah. <laughs> it was, um, that was the one I think it's at Hammersmith and Apollo. Yeah, it was. I'll never forget that one. Because, um, it was one of those days where they were getting the bomber in, you know, the lighting rig, the big lighting rig. And it's oh, yeah, the oh, bomber. It took so long to set up. It was a bit of a spinal tap moment for me, that gig. Because <laughs> I've been in the... We got there about three o'clock, and they're still setting it up. And we were due on stage, I think, at half seven, when the audience were coming in. And we hadn't even got our amps on stage or anything. We know sound check. Our amps on is not put on stage. Because it took so long to set this bomber up. And, of course, what I didn't know is the bomber was sort of set back a few feet, and there were no lights. At the, at the front of the stage and when we come on I do a thing where I run on stage playing on my own and get to the front and get the audience going <laughs> and of course the, the uh, crew were taking bets on you know because I've been drinking all day as well they were taking bets on when I was going to fall off the stage not if I was going to fall off the stage when I was going to fall off the stage and I ran <laughs> on stage and I walked straight into the PA because <laughs> I couldn't oh, yeah. I literally couldn't see it. I mean, I just ran on stage and I just went to the front of the stage and I bashed me. Well, luckily, I only bashed me guitar and a bit of my hand. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of funny. Then Enid fell over the monitors backwards because she couldn't see them. Kim turned oh, around and started shouting to the wrong... She said, one, two, three, four, to the wrong drum kit. <laughs> hey, that's rock and roll. Your girl school's always had a sense of humor. Yeah, I saw Spinal Tap that one, because obviously we just didn't have time to sound check on no, no, We just went straight on Raw as the crowd was coming in. It was amazing, really. <laughs> that yeah, was that's, one, 
one thing about girls school is that the band has always had a sense of humor and has even referred to itself as slapstick rock at times so that's pretty cool that you don't take yourself so seriously and you can have fun and it's you know just about having fun not just about well, the seriousness of it it's a bit ugly, isn't it? i mean rock and roll is about having some fun why, why is it be so serious there's enough serious what's going on in this planet right now Let's have some fun. This is the light release, isn't it? Music. Absolutely. Can you tell everyone the name of the upcoming new album? Yes, it's called What the 45. What the 45? <laughs> Genius. I love that. What the 45. Awesome. WTF 45. Uh, WTF, it was just something that came up in the studio. I was, we, we were bouncing around names, you know, you do, you start thinking, well, oh, no, that's not good enough. Yeah, I've heard that before. And I just went to make a cup of coffee. And I thought, 45 years, what can we do? It's 45 years, I can't believe it. And I went back and I was, what the, 45? <laughs> <laughs> and that was it, it just stuck. <laughs> <for what? laughs> it just that's stuck. awesome. And th um, and that's the first album you have released in eight years with Girl School. The first single is called Are You Ready, which is amazing. Again, if anyone hasn't heard that, we're going to play that song as soon as this interview is over. And um, I would like to ask you if you enjoyed touring with Anvil back in 2010. I love Anvil. I wonder if you guys had fun touring Europe with them. Always, yeah, we've done two or three tours with Anvil since I've been in. I mean, we get on really well, really good friends. I, I keep in touch with your lips all the time on here, so, <laughs> yeah, we're good friends. That's and awesome. I was, yeah, yeah, Lips has been a guest on the show, and he's so awesome. They played at Portland recently, and man, I'm telling you, it's just like it was 1984 all over again. I couldn't believe it, you know? Exactly, and they, they love it, what we do as well. They'll never stop. <laughs> Nope, they're, they're lifers, for sure. They're in for life. That's for sure. <laughs> well, the, the new album drops in July, What the 45? The new single, Are You Ready? We are talking to Jackie Chambers from Girl School. Is there anything you'd like to touch on before I let you go, Jackie? I'll just look out for the album, pre-order it. Let's get it out there. Let's get some more gigs in. Let's get back to America. Awesome. And if you hear the site one as well. that as well. <laughs> yeah. So everyone, uh, let's support uh, Girl School. Uh, you know, in come July, everyone knows what to do to take care of the band and keep the band rocking and keep the music coming, man. And we'll keep supporting Girl School just like the Barmy Army. And uh, yeah, rock on, Jackie Chambers. Thanks for joining us on the Church of Rock today. We're big time looking forward to the new album. Very much. Thank you. Okay. Cheers. Have a great one. You too. Take care.